Hey guys, it's Dana and it's time to talk about money. And in this video, I wanted to talk about how to prepare both financially and within your household for a second wave of the pandemic. All right, so let's talk about that. Okay, so in the spring of 2020, we all sort of were caught off guard, right? Things just shut down. Uh, in the United States, it was the middle of March, and many of us were not really prepared for that as far as um, maybe financially, also just having food and supplies on hand. It was very scary, and it still is. It still is scary, and we don't know what's going to be happening in the fall, right? So if there is a second wave or a second shutdown, how can we best prepare? And of course, you know, you always just hope for the best, but plan for the worst. And you can't really fully prepare for anything. We just have to do, you know, do the best we can with the knowledge that we have and the tools and resources at our disposal. So definitely trying to prepare is a good idea though, I think, and because it's highly likely, according to experts, that there will be some kind of second wave. And um, I don't know, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen. So how can we prepare? All right, so I wanted to share with you seven things that I think you should be paying attention to to prepare for this second wave. Number one is to stock up on food as best you can, right? You don't wanna be blowing your food budget and you don't wanna be hoarding items. So when I say stock up, I don't mean go to the grocery store and like wipe the shelves clean of every single item that they have. Just when you're going grocery shopping, add an extra one or two of those particular items. And the food that you wanna stock up on is whatever food items your family really loves, eats, enjoys. Uh, maybe it is some comfort food items. You know, for my son, he loves her Hershey bars, he just loves them. You know, that's like his only dessert that he'll eat in the world. So we, you know, buy like a case of those when we can from BJ's and we have lots of Hershey bars because, you know, if this, you know, shelves start going bare of certain things, certain comfort items um, for your family are just kind of important. Obviously staples to cans of stuff that you, you know, vegetables and maybe some canned soup, just things that you and your family really enjoy. Just try to buy, you know, an extra one or two of them every time you go shopping and then put it in a closet or in a base and make sure it's items that will store well and, you know, not be, you know, make sure they're rodent proof or whatever. Um, but definitely start thinking about stocking up on some food, uh, maybe some water, extra water. Every time we go grocery shopping, my husband is buying just an extra gallon of water that we're sticking in our basement just to have that on hand. Okay, so think about food. Number two is to stock up on supplies supplies. And supplies, um, number one being medications, um, painkillers, you might want to grab, you know, any kind like band-aids, um, cold medicine, things that uh, I think are important, you know, when you're at home, stuck in the house, you don't want to go out to the hospital or a doctor or even to the store. What kind of items, you know, would you need to ha have on hand as far as medications and those types of things? Also, just um, detergents, La laundry detergent. In the spring, that was something I I really focused on because I was I figured if we were all sick or some of us are sick and you know we want to really be able to do laundry and get things clean. So laundry detergent, dishwasher detergent, um, you know those things I think are important. Toilet paper, paper products, you know that you might that was a big deal in the springtime, um, spring in the United States. So in, when this all began back in March 2020 for us that was you know toilet paper was gone everywhere you went you couldn't buy toilet paper so maybe you want to buy some extra cases of that and just keep that on hand um so think about some of those supplies that you'd want to stock up on number three that i think is important to do that would probably everybody should have this all the time not even just during a pandemic is a hospital bag so have some kind of backpack or a bag ready to go near your front door with four children i've been to the hospital i've had to go to the er um, with the kids and I remember the very first time I had to take one of the kids to the ER I had nothing with me I didn't have any cell phone chargers and they don't provide that usually at hospitals you're just in the room and sometimes they might not even be coming in the room for hours you're just sitting in there and um, so you know you're you want to maybe have some extra chargers in a hospital bag maybe a towel uh, some extra clothes in there maybe a granola bar or something a bottle of water because especially as like the caregiver if you're not the patient if you're there with a child in the hospital they're not going to be like 
thinking of you and giving you those things. You might be really hungry, um, you know, so you just, you might need to change your clothes um, for you or, you know, just you, so just think about some things you might need at the hospital. If you were just sitting around at the hospital for hours and hours unexpectedly, you weren't planning to go. You just had to rush out the door and go to the hospital. What things do you, that you might need in that bag? Okay. So um, prepare a hospital bag to have on hand by your front door or whatever door you leave the house at so that you could just grab the bag and go and have some of those extra things in there um, that would help with little kids even just having like my phone was important like with the charger because they play little games on it when you have a you know they might be in the hospital sick and they're just they're bored and impatient and totally uncooperative even though they're the ones who's the patient in the hospital so just think about those things right a hospital bag also um cash okay so have some kind of cash I know a lot of places are not accepting cash, perhaps, but I think it's good to have some small bills, tens, twenties, um, maybe a hundred dollars worth or so. Just have some emergency cash on hand, um, just in case. All right, you're thinking worst case scenario, um, maybe banks are shut down, you can't get your money out of your account. You just want to have some kind of cash to pay for something. Maybe you need to pay for gas or pay for you know some kind of food item just have some bills around because um I just think that's something that's good to have in an emergency situation okay also to prepare for the second wave I think to make sure you have some kind of office spaces within your your home your apartment wherever you're at for either you to be working or for your children to be doing schoolwork. I mean, our school district has announced they are going to have a fully virtual start for all students. So every all the students are gonna be online. So we have had to create four office spaces. And that's not easy in a small home. So four office spaces for children, and two office spaces for my husband and I. So that's six total office spaces that we need. So try to create some kind of zones that you can designate. Um, actually, we've utilized places I never thought we would. Our pantry is my husband's office. Um, there's a space in my husband and I's bedroom for my oldest daughter. And then I'm working out of my daughter, oldest daughter's bedroom. So try not to work and in your bedroom. I always think it's not good to be working and sleeping in the same space because when you go to bed at night, you don't want to have to be thinking about work. But someone else in your family, maybe, who doesn't have that bedroom could use that room for their office because that's not where they sleep. So that's kind of my thought process with that. So my oldest daughter, her office, like I said, is in my bedroom because she can come in and that's where she's going to be doing her schoolwork during the day. And then when she's done schoolwork, she can shut the lid and leave my bedroom and go to her bedroom and feel relaxed and go to sleep. I'm working out of her bedroom. So when I'm done work, this is not where I sleep and I can leave that office space and go to my bedroom. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> so try to have carved out office spaces. It can be in bedrooms, but maybe try to not have it be in your own bedroom. But I think it's good to prepare for that. If your school district, if your children are actually going to school, there's a high chance that they're going to shut down that school and the kids are going to be coming back home. So where are they going to sit to do their schoolwork when they come back to the house? Okay, next is to build an emergency fund, okay? If you don't have an emergency fund at all, no money saved, then definitely, hopefully you've been saving, but now's the time to start saving money as best you can. Um, so obviously, if you are trying to pay down debt, you might not have a huge emergency fund because you're trying to pay down debt. I think paying down debt is very important. If you can pay, if you're close to paying off some debts, I think continuing doing that if you're still working is a great idea because it will minimize your total bills that you have as far as what's money going out. So if you can pay off some things, then it's going to really free up some money, which is great. Um, if you're far away from paying things off and you know you you have a, a long ways to go, maybe you want to sort of pause you know, in your process of paying things off and just pay the minimums on them and sort of build up your emergency fund a little bit in preparation for this. And then once we sort of get to the other side of it, like, you know, if it, a vaccine comes out, everything's great, then you could take that big savings account and then you could just dump it on the debt. So you're not really losing progress. You're just sort of, you know, as Dave Ramsey says, if you're a Dave Ramsey follower, you are pausing. You're just pausing it while you build up money in preparation for this potential second 
second wave. And then, like I said, if it doesn't happen, you can, you don't need that money. That's great. You can throw it onto the debt. Um, you'll still get it paid off. But if you're close to paying things off, maybe you just want to keep attacking it so that you can just get it paid off and get that out of your life and then go about the business of saving, right? Obviously, if you think you might lose your job, you absolutely want to be saving as much money as you can to make sure you're going to be able to pay, you know, just minimum expenses, pay your bills, pay your pay your mortgage, your rent payment. Um, that's most important is to make sure that you are taking care of the bills within your household so you don't get evicted. Um, or, you know, have a foreclosure on your hands in the future. Okay. Okay. And then last, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say this, <laughs> you might want to sell your car. And I'm saying that even if your car is paid off, I'm saying it because we only need one car right now. Like we are, you know, my husband and I are both working and we have two cars, but we, and we used to commute to work, but my husband has been told he pretty much is going to be working from home indefinitely. And we don't really need we don't really need two cars anymore. So if you are a two car household and you and your partner are both working from home or just one of you works and that person is now working from home, maybe you don't need two cars anymore. Your kids are online schooling. You don't even need to drive them to school. Um, it's not like you can't purchase another car in the future. I mean, you could go back out and buy a car later when you needed one, but it's something to consider possibly selling one of your cars and take that money and put it in the bank just as extra sort of insurance against you know whatever's going to be happening during a potential second wave. So think about it. And people don't like it when you say sell cars, but if you're really not using it, you're not driving it, you might not need it, maybe now's the time to sell it and get that money and just hold on to the money. And then, like I said, you could buy another car maybe a year from now if you if you need it, if you both need to go back to work, your kids are back to school, you know. But whatever your situation is, you know, if you need the car to get to work, to drive to work, obviously it's different. But um, just some way to help you to sort of boost up your emergency fund and just in case, right? Okay, you guys, so that's it. Some things to think about to prep for a potential second wave. I really hope that you are doing well, um, that you are feeling well, your job is stable, and that you're doing well, you know, both financially and emotionally. This is a very difficult time. I tell the kids all the time, you know, this has never, ever happened wherever, where parents are working from home and their kids are home doing school at home. Never in the history has this happened like this. <laughs> so, um, and I mean, it's just completely, so we're all doing the best that we can every day and um, just take it day by day and try to breathe and be kind to each other as best we can, um, even though we're all together 24 seven and that's, uh, there's no real breaks from each other and that has its own challenges and also benefits, right? So, all right, but I'm thinking of you, I hope you're well, and I will talk to you, talk to you in the next video. Okay, all right, bye guys.